I'm going to discuss today an extremely important condition that is pulmonary embolism. So let's start with the case. A 75 year old female had a road traffic accident with multiple fractures and was bedridden for the last 10 days. She suddenly developed acute respiratory distress at her home and was brought to the emergency department. Her heart rate was 142 per minute, blood pressure 90 by 60, temperature 100.9 and the SpO2 was 89% on 100% oxygen via the non-rebreather mask. So if you have a presentation like this, you know that the patient is suffering from pulmonary embolism. So the learning objective of my talk are to discuss various presentations of pulmonary embolism, to discuss initial approach to diagnose a patient of pulmonary embolism, to discuss indication of initial treatment like thrombolysis, and to discuss the long-term anticoagulant treatment and its duration. The acute pulmonary embolism is an extremely common condition. It has a high mortality rate if you do not treat it appropriately. Clinical presentation is highly variable and non-specific. You may have a mild symptoms to a very fatal where patient can die because of pulmonary embolism. Diagnosis requires appropriate and accurate imaging. Prompt diagnosis and treatment can reduce mortality from 30% to 2.8%. Pulmonary embolism is common in males than females and the overall incidence is about 112 cases per 1 lakh and it rises with age. In United States who always have data for everything, they have noticed that almost 1 lakh people die because of pulmonary embolism in their country. A little bit about the pathophysiology. Pulmonary embolism, most commonly, we all know, arises from the thrombi in the deep venous system of the lower extremities and the iliofemoral vein thrombi, most clinically recognized as a cause of pulmonary embolism. These patients, if they have a significant pulmonary embolism, it can result in a ventilation perfusion mismatch, release of inflammatory mediators which lead to the surfactant dysfunction, atelectasis and alveolar hemorrhage and intrapulmonary shunting. A person who have a massive uh, pulmonary embolism, they develop hypotension and it basically results, there is an increase in pulmonary vascular resistance because of obstruction of the outflow tract. It will lead to the right ventricular dilatation, it will lead to impaired LV filling and eventually it will impair the cardiac output.